Hello, and welcome to the episode 11 of Anime On Draft. I am your host this week, Rolando, and joining me today are our co-hosts, Drew. Hola. And Alec. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome this week. We have, in this episode, at least one epi- uh, season finale, the first of, um, I guess, many throughout this season um so we will be covering today attack on titan season finale aromanga sensei episode i don't remember what episode it was 10 11 11 11 and uh soccer quest episode 11 um yep our weekly beer today is the rogue shiracha stout um hot stout beer yes you picked this beer this week. Uh, you want to tell us about it? So I lived in Portland um, for a while and um, became very familiar with the uh, the Rogue Brewery. Um, I don't think they're like based exactly in Portland. I think they're in uh, Newport, Oregon. But um, they had a brewery or at least a um, restaurant uh, within Portland. And so I got to like uh, some of their beers. They, um, they have a pretty eclectic style, um, kind of a style all their own. And, uh, this beer kind of, uh, takes the cake for that. I've never had this one in particular. I had always seen it, you know, that you think of Sriracha and you think of that iconic red bottle with the green cap, uh, when you go and eat like, uh, Vietnamese food or Asian food or anything like that. And in I was fridge. always curious to try it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was always curious to try it, never wanted to pull the trigger, was kind of scared of it, but I said, you know, for the sake of science and the podcast, let's go ahead and uh, and try this guy. For science. (laughs) So I'm I'm sorry if it's awful, and and the way it smells, I think it's going to be awful. (laughs) All right. It's going to be interesting. uh, (laughs) It'll be interesting. uh, Do you guys have the bottle in front of you? I sure do. Um, You want to read us the uh, little description on the back? Let's do it. So it starts off by saying, I put Sriracha in my rogue. Um, Dedicated to the roosters. Uh, Rogue Sriracha, hot stout beer made from Hoi Fong's original hot chili sauce and sun-ripened rogue farm ingredients. Uh, So take that as you will. Um, Is ready to drink with soups, sauces. You're just going to eat sauces? I I don't. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Pasta, pizza, Hot dogs, hamburgers, chow mein, or anything you'd like to wash down with a spicy kick. So, the way I'm reading this, guys, is that there is fucking sriracha in this beer. <laughs> yeah, it says it is brewed with. Where is it? Brewed it said someone with. on here brewed with. Uh, is it on here? Or was it something I read online? I I'm pretty I sure read I read somewhere, somewhere that it was like brewed with the yeah. like sriracha chilies that they use in, you know. Well, it sriracha. says made from the. The hot chili sauce, so I'm I'm assuming oh, that's yeah. I'm assuming it's in there. Yeah, and I like I said the the bottle is super cool. It's like it is the sriracha bottle. It just has mm-hmm. like rogue on it, but it's got the you know the rooster on it. Um, everything you would expect from sriracha, and, and the the, the finish the nice finishing cap. touch was the uh, the green cap. That's mm-hmm. the you know iconic. I, I think I'm actually gonna keep idea. this cap. It's actually it's it's super cool. So without the cap I'll, though, I'll it kind of dies. That. <laughs> like when you take the cap off you're kind of like oh man this isn't as cool yeah, as it was because it's, it's like it's like that that iconic like bright green and it's mm-hmm. it's it's really cool so look uh on our instagram for a picture of that cool um yeah. well um why don't we start off with our first impressions of this beer um like it's got a pretty dark very dark stout color it looks like a stout yes no. um there's not too much head on mine i don't know about the two of you no i got a little and then it fizzled down but there's a small amount staying it didn't just disappear into mm. the dark color there's still a little up, up there so it doesn't just look like a you definitely cup of soda. can cannot see through it, it yes yeah. no i don't even dark. see any carbonation i don't either it's no. just it's just dark <laughs> it's just dark. dark as night it smells you know it smells it like smells a stout, but it also kind of smells like soy sauce for yeah. some reason. Um, like spicy soy sauce. Yes. Yeah. It's so. got like fairly, you know, like thin legs. But like the little residue, like that 
kind of hangs there is is very thin like a film i just took a sip guys and i i don't know what to think of it it's strange Mm. (laughs) it's It's got kick it's got kick yeah you can feel it at the back of your throat that there's Mm -hmm. chilies in it um it lingers there that kind of heat it changes so it starts out yeah. tasting one way, kind of just like, well, this tastes kind of like a stout. And then all of a sudden at the back of your throat, you get that weird chili heat. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, it's evolving into this weird sriracha flavoring, like like chili soy sauce, but stout still. And now, and now it's like oddly garlicky, I guess. <laughs> it's just... This is, sure that's not what you this ate is earlier. A, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's not actual garlic, but it has that kind of like, and that's the best I can describe. A bitter like finish. The flavor, yeah, I guess it's just. This is a funky. very weird, like visceral experience because it's like cold. You're drinking this cold beer, and all of a sudden it becomes warm and hot, like you're eating like a hot bowl of noodles or something. It's I don't I don't know, guys. It's fucking weird. It's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this again here. Yeah, this is strange. I've had um, stouts with like jalapenos and things like that in them, mm-hmm. but this this is different from that. That you get the heat right up front, and you know you're like, okay, that's kind of tasty. But this you don't get the heat up front. You get the stouty, chocolatey, coffee sort of flavor, and mm-hmm. then you swallow it, and then the back of your throat is kind of on fire like i i it's not like super spicy i like yeah. spicy food um even if you're not you big on that, spicy it won't kill you yeah it's not like death spicy but no. it's it's it's, it's got, weird yeah <laughs> that's all i can say is it's weird it's so weird oh well, i mean like what do you like alec what do you think of the like the flavor palette of this beer i think it's complicated <laughs> i think I, I mean like i think because it changes you're like sitting here constantly thinking about what you're tasting now i think as a stout it like the stout part at the beginning it tastes like a stout to me um it tastes you know the typical notes that you expect from a stout for flavor but then all of a sudden you get that that you know the the chili at the back of your throat and it's got that weird kind of like added flavors clearly coming from whatever they're sun ripened rogue farms ingredients are (laughs) and the original hot chili sauce like whatever those are are clearly shining through um (laughs) you know a little a little bit after you take your sip once the heat starts to hit and then it changes again and i'm just like this is just weird right i don't think i've ever drank a stout that changes so much well drew like um you're more familiar with rogue than i am i've only had one other beer from them um have you had their just regular stout yeah, and this this is basically how their regular stout tastes, but with a more earthy and then spicy kick, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Alec mentioned like the or we kind of talked about too the the sun dried ingredients, and I I kind of get like that sun dried tomatoy acidity sort of deal going on with this. Um, but in terms of your question, like yeah, it's 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 pretty much their regular stout, but with chilies. more earthy and then again spicy at the end um okay um cool it's, well, it is yeah. thin <laughs> i yeah. have to say it feels thin mm-hmm. for a beer which kind of speaks to what you were saying about the legs earlier mm-hmm. it drinks really thin it doesn't feel super thick or anything like that whereas like, like yeah, a lot yeah. of stouts are mm-hmm. like are heavy thick. heavier yeah this, this one would i feel go like really if I well the thing, with food cold. yeah yeah I was thinking of, you know, like if you're having like, you know, like a snack of like some like popcorn or like kettle corn or something like it could probably mm-hmm. pair pretty well with that. Good salty Cheez-its. snack. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> cheese. It's every Cheez-its, I'm going to tell yeah. you right now, if you want a snack with your beer ever, cheese, it's go with everything. Oh, I mean, Literally. Specifically <laughs> would probably be really good with it. Yeah, it would be good with this, especially. But I don't. I don't know what it is about cheese. It's probably the salt and cheese, but cheese its go with everything. <laughs> so if you ever just want beer and an unhealthy snack, get cheese its and you're going to be like, well, I mean, I've to never be fair, like if you're lactose intolerant, cheese goes with everything. <laughs> it's true. 
And Cheez Its are amazing. But, anyways, I digress. I'd like, I'd kind of like what they said to try, like, um, either pizza. Pizza stands out to me that I think this would be good on because I like putting sriracha on my pizza anyway. Um, but, like, some sort of like noodle dish. Like, I bet this would be really good with like pod thai or maybe even pho. Um, yeah. You know, something along those lines, kind of sticking more to the, the Asian roots. But yeah, I think uh, like pizza would be, would be good. I, mean, I think, I yeah, mean, pizza a hot goes bowl with beer, of pho so. would might, might be good because it's like you've, you have the contrast of you've got the, the hot broth and noodles. Mm -hmm. And then like, depending on how spicy you make it, I put a lot of sriracha in my pho. Um, me too. Yeah. Like me too. You got the hot, and then you've got this beer, which is cold, but also has the same kick. That'd be kind you of know, an interesting I think combination. This might be pretty good with rolled tacos from like a Mexican joint. I'm not gonna lie. I think I would eat yeah. it with mm -hmm. rolled tacos, and I think it would be pretty good. What I'm gonna be curious as we continue to drink this because it's actually like. It's kind of weird, but I kind of dig it. I, I dig, like, the burn and stuff, so I'll probably finish the bottle. But I'm wondering is if we get closer to the end of the bottle, if it will become more spicy. Because Maybe. as I'm drinking, like, even my my glass, like, the farther uh, along I get in the beer, like, it's becoming more and more spicier. Maybe so I'm wondering if there's like, going to be sediment and stuff at the bottom. Well, it says don't shake. It says don't shake. So stir. It says don't Haven't shake Haven't you seen on the bottle. 007? Shake and not stir. You can stir. <laughs> yeah, but well, different like I'm wondering though. if... Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm, just... I'm wondering if we get towards the bottom, if we're just going to get, like, a massive, like, punch in the face of sriracha. <laughs> so it'll be uh, interesting to see. Cool. Well, uh... Now uh, that we've kind of had our initial and, you know, I guess prolonged <laughs> impressions of this beer, it kind of, you know, takes a while to get the whole complexity of it. Um, Alec, why don't we start with you and uh, what would you give it? Um, I mean, I, I think it's interesting to drink and it would go with a lot of foods. I don't see myself drinking more than one bottle of these. I probably will finish this bottle just fine, but... Um, uh, I don't, it's just weird. Um, <laughs> it's, it has nothing to do with the flavors. It's just weird. It like weirds me out a little bit. Um, but I'll, I'll probably, because I could drink the whole thing and, and the flavor's not like awful. It's better than I expected. I'm going to say that I had really low expectations, so I'm pleasantly surprised that it's not awful. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and probably say like, uh, 3.25, maybe a three. Let's just go on the side of caution and go with three. <laughs> cool. Uh, Drew, what do you think? I kind of like it. It's like, I like beer. I like spicy foods and they kind of combine these. Um, it's not too stouty for me. Um, it's like we said, it's kind of thin and pretty drinkable for a stout. Um, what I really like about it, though, is the lingering fire at the back of my throat when you drink it. It's it's pretty interesting. Um, not giving it too high praise, but um, I definitely like it and will finish my glass, uh, finish the bottle. I'm going to go with, um, for my rating, 3.25. I think that's, that's pretty good for this. And like Alex said, my expectations were really low. I bought it because the bottle's cool. <laughs> um, but you know, not bad. I, I, I'm curious. I might buy it again and then like eat, get like spicy takeout or something like mm -hmm. that and, and eat that together and then maybe, uh, maybe talk about it then. But for now I'm, I'm going to stick at uh, 3.25 spicy takeout. Cool. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I had absolutely zero expectations for this. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's basically a stout with a, uh, you know, spice kick. Yep. Nothing really too much there. Simple, but uh, I guess effective because like I, I feel my throat <laughs> like, you know, tingling with the burn of the of the sriracha chilies. Um, so, yeah, kind of with you guys. Um, I was prepared to give it below, you know, a three. You know, like the I thought I thought this was gonna be territory. our first one where we're we're gonna be giving a two to something. Like I <laughs> yeah. was I yeah. was genuinely shocked. <laughs> I've given a two to something. But uh I've given oh, in the two to, to like, the mission, oh, the mission. Oh, yeah, double fucking right. IPA because I just couldn't. I thought I oh, maybe hack it. maybe all of us uh all of us would give Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give as a side note, Alec finally had five. Pliny the other day. 
Although yeah, it was yeah. a, Old. it was an improperly aged Pliny because a certain somebody decided to hold it for three weeks after buying it. Um, so it wasn't as hoppy as usual. But Alec, you enjoyed it. That's fine for me. Yeah, I yeah. liked it because it wasn't as hoppy. So um, I I was a bit disappointed at how it lost some of its you know kick. But um, back to this beer. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not amazing. But uh, I would be interested, like you said, Drew, to try this with a food and see if my mm-hmm. you know impression it of it changes. It might change our opinions. Yeah. yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. right now I'm just at a three. There's not. It's not bad but it's not great and food really does kind of change um some beers because i know i took a beer class in college and the teacher like he had a couple beers where he was like here drink this and everyone was like "Eh," and he's like it's just okay right it's not that great and then we had like this thing that somebody like cooked or something because it was part of the culinary school uh, at my school and uh they were like eat it with this and then he's like it's like four times better now isn't it and it was like i forget what beer it was but it the food that we ate with it it made it taste substantially better so this may be an example of one of those as well Mm -hmm. that's a good point all right well cool um so why don't we move in to our main anime topic of the week um (coughs) we have episode 37 titled scream of attack on titan also the season finale um, ooh. Ooh. so, uh, I'm going to start off with you, Drew. Um, what were your first impressions of this episode? Very first thing that kind of, uh, was kind of, I guess, funny for me is, uh, Hans has fucking ungodly strength and is somehow <laughs> to just like able to block this titan swinging full force with his body he's mm-hmm. like yeah i'm awesome like what <laughs> i was confused about so that <laughs> was that was really goofy um but getting back to more um substantial uh talking points of the episode um we see you know the scouts kind of falling into chaos as the battle continues more and more dying um there's, a, you know, a couple different situations going on. There's, you know, Erwin with his lost arm screaming, like, get Aaron, get Aaron. And then there's Mikasa and uh, Aaron having, like, this existential crisis of, like, it's just you and me against the world sort of deal. And then um, also uh, Armin and, um, you know, trying to, you know, defend off what he's trying to defend off. So a, a bunch of different scenarios kind of devolving all together, which was trying to defend off pretty, his responsibilities. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah it was uh it was it was it was cool because um you see like the vulnerability of uh of the scouts and everything and how powerful these these titans are and things like that um especially with aaron being unable to transform um you know he's literally biting off his baby hand that's growing back and, <laughs> Take my little and screaming hand. a lot that's just exactly what i thought it <laughs> makes you. yeah it makes me think of fucking uh, scary so, movie scary movie three i think right yeah. <laughs> take my little hand it's stronger <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of uh, Dead Deadpool when like his arm is growing back. Oh, he's got growing like, back. little fucking. <laughs> he's got the little hand. baby arms. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. I really, forgot about that. Really kind of kind of gross, but yeah, it was it was a good episode. And then uh, we finally the the death flag was triggered, and uh, you know Rip Hans. He's literally uh, Rip. He's yep. He literally ripped Broken with half. teeth and. <laughs> That was going to happen. We all knew it. We all knew it. As soon as he said, even if I have to die, like, we are like, yep, he died. But even the episode before that, I was just like, dude, Hans is going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple episodes, like it's like every 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 time the episode was ending, Hans is doing something like, "Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know get in there for you guys, and even if I have to die, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna make it and out." It's like, and dude, it's you're like, gonna die. All right. <laughs> well, shit, bro, you're dead. <laughs> so, uh, Alex, they prepped us for it. Um, yeah. So, so what do you think about that weird, just scene between Aaron and Mikasa? So you know, we just talked about how Hans rip in pepperonis, buddy. Um, rip. but he dies, and then Aaron's just like sitting there like a madman, just biting himself. 
and la- yeah. well then he after he dies he's like <laughs> cracking up on the ground yeah like he's about to turn into the the Joker from Batman or something. Right. I'm just like, oh shit! Uh, but uh, there, like that <laughs> specific scene, it seems like everything else is uh, starting to be tuned out, and then there's just all this chaos going on on the battlefield, and then Yukasa is just like, you know, sitting there like looking all love you eyes with Aaron. What did you think about this scene? Um, I thought it was a little odd. It seemed out of like character i guess from the show in general but i mean it was kind of bound to happen i was like when are they gonna when are they gonna pair them up they've always been paired but you know now there's this weird like almost romantic seeming attachment between the two of them and it also seemed like that conversation him talking to mikasa and her being like you wrap this thing around me and he's like i'm gonna i'll do that forever like kind of triggered his power to like (laughs) triggered his power to fucking like control titans and shit which I, I guess is the he is the coordinate or he he has the coordinate or something. And uh, <clears throat> so it se- kind of seemed like a trigger. But back to what Drew said, actually, about um, the us against the world. When I was watching that scene, I kept thinking that this was kind of like a, a talked out anime version of your typical like 80s rock band ba- like ballad or some shit and I'm just like this totally seems like like us against the world and like we're gonna we're gonna sing it out except spoken and in anime and that's what that's kind of what it was I mean yeah. it's, it's just like the the whole show kind of centers on on those two and it's just all culminating in this like the battlefield's breaking down there's no sense of you know control or order and it's just Mikasa staring into Aaron's eyes being all lovey-dovey and be like hey and let's be real Mikasa is the the man in this in this situation yeah, or she in this wears relationship the pants. <laughs> definitely oh, and yeah. she's like it's just it's just you and me babe and then Aaron's like I'm angsty. I'm just gonna start yelling. <laughs> and she like, she's like, she wants him so bad to like kiss him and stuff. And I wrote in my notes like, LOL. Uh, of course they don't kiss. Yeah, he just <laughs> so stares Aaron, up. No <laughs> just, just like, Aaron, no balls. Aaron, no balls. <laughs> I, had like, a, I, uh, I had a. I had a. I had a question for you, Rolando. I really uh, enjoyed the uh, the music, though, in that particular scene, especially when, you know, Aaron stands up and is, like, staring at the Titans um, and, like, moving in. What did, what did, you're kind of more of a sound guy. What did you think of that and, like, the how powerful that uh, that moment was? Well, I think in particular that moment was more, was stronger in and of itself music-wise just because they tuned everything out so you don't have all these, like, everything's kind of muffled in the background there's like yelling and chaos like all the sounds of like the battle that's going on and then you just kind of see this kind of very awkwardly placed lovey-dovey scene Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. you know this music that's just like you know swelling through in the background and it's just like yeah like it adds to like you know i guess the emotional impact but at the same time like i've just felt myself sitting there going like this is out of place yeah it was just like and the how they for me too, how they decided to draw it too, because like the show is normally very dark and it's a lot of oranges and browns. Um, yeah, it seems like a lot of times they're fighting at like sunset and stuff. But for whatever reason, in that scene, they decided to give us like a nice like bright, bright. sun glare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like and they were having a paint in a park. Palette. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the scene in the first. Um, the first season, I think it's even the very first episode where, you know, Aaron's asleep as like a younger kid and he like wakes up kind of like dazed and like, you know, he's, he's like so groggy, like the sun's very bright and stuff like that. It kind of reminded me of that scene a little bit. And it was it was really out of place because, like I said, it's like this show's very dark and it's like, you know, dark colors, oranges, browns, dark reds. Right. They're very know, warm colors. Different things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the way they animated it was pretty cool for that scene too, though. How they had them, it was out of place, but I just thought it was neat because it reminded me of those like those really epic parts in movies that you see where they've got the main character, and then in the background it's all kind of blurred out a little, but you can see like crazy shit going on, you know, mm-hmm. like something you'd picture out of. I don't know if it happened in Pri- Saving Private Ryan, but something you'd picture out of that, that where like mm-hmm. yeah, someone's chilling, then there's like explosions in the background and crazy shit going I think on. You're talking, and it about always creates a powerful a moment. A specific though. scene in that in that film. Where, um, you know, like it's kind of Tom Hanks's last hurrah mm-hmm. um, in that. I think so. Yeah, that that specific yeah. point, I think, is what you're talking about. It is in that movie, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I was like, like, I don't it's remember. It's like everybody. It is, uh, 
and it's it's too it's like everybody looking up to Aaron as well like even Mikasa isn't on his level she's like sitting on the ground staring mm-hmm. up at him when he's um when he's yelling because he's always fucking yelling he's always <laughs> um, big surprise but yeah it's he's he's the biggest thing in the shot he's the most important he's who's going to kind of lead them um down the future and different things like that so really powerful scene and this and just in general this episode was animated you know extremely well that's what you expect uh from a season finale as well um put all their budget there you know super good job (laughs) yep Um, budget come right there so i want to as we move on i want to talk about the act break i catch so we get some mm-hmm. information and um, I have it written down in my notes exactly what it says. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. Um, so it says, through extensive research and accounts of various incidents, it has become clear that the scourge of Titans, which have long plagued humanity, are of human origin. The colossal Titan, which destroyed the wall at Shiganshina district, is a human processing or, sorry, process. a human possessing so like the ability to transform into a titan, demonstrated <laughs> by its intent to breach the wall with the purpose to exterminate humans. Titans are not sent by, by the heavens to punish us for our sins, but invaders that must be driven back. Thus, we swear by the blood of our brothers and comrades spilt, or by the blood our brothers and comrades have spilled Waging war against this foe, we shall not relent our lands nor yield the fight. So, I had to pause a bunch of times, by the yeah. way, because it was like blink, blink, blink. I was like, oh, fast shit, as hell. Yeah, I was like, I can't read all that, guys. Come on. But basically, <laughs> now we have like this kind of, um, what you call it, this confirmation that now they're starting to understand. Hey, these like the Titans are like humans, and like this leads to this. Mm-hmm scene near the end where we have Irwin sitting in his bed recovering and he's sitting in the room with Pixis and Levi so um Alec you want to talk about this scene um yes yeah, so it <clears throat> it's those three in there and then in in walk uh Connie and <clears throat> what's the name of the Hanji lieutenant Hanji yeah so they walk in and they they say they took Connie to like the town and he you know, confirm their suspicions that the people of the town were the Titans. And he's got the, you know, they show the picture of his, his mom and dad, I guess, like behind his back or whatever. And, uh, eventually they leave and you can see kind of the different reactions between the two characters, um, Levi and, uh, Irwin, where Irwin is kind of smiling, like we're one step closer to the truth. And then Levi's like, wait, I've just been out there killing people. And like, am I supposed to be excited about this? And then Irwin's like, but we're one step closer to the truth. And then Levi's like, no one's going to be left when we finally find out the truth. He's um, just like smiling. It's just kind of creepy. And Irwin's just <laughs> smiling like a creepy person. Like, yeah. I love killing people. Like, <laughs> Levi, Levi turns around. He's like, why the fuck are you smiling, dude? Yeah. And it, you can see like the, the difference in their, their opinions or whatever, but it kind of, you know, their characters are pretty different as well. Cause Levi's always been kind of dark and Irwin's been that, you know, big, like we talked about in what, yeah. what, last episode. Yeah, he's that charismatic beacon of hope of a, of a, like, of a leader that you would want. And so it kind of shows the difference in the, in the characters. But yeah, I think it was a good way to the end, end the episode, too, because it's clearly a cliffhanger. Like, oh, well, we know some, but what more truth are they going to find out, you know? So speaking um, of that cliffhanger, so uh, at the very end, it zooms past all this stuff. Like it looks like Aaron's going to try and, you know, plug up the wall. But like before that, there's the conversation where John and Armin tell Aaron like, Oh, we think that you're the reason why the Titans started attacking, you know, Reiner and Bertolt. And so now he's like kind of accepted this responsibility that he has this power to use for humanity. Mm -hmm. But we see at the very end, the beast Titan and someone that kind of looks like Aaron's dad, Standing, That's what I was going to say. Standing yeah. on him, mm-hmm. like sitting on top of Wall Maria. Like, Drew, what do you think this means? So the the couple of things that I wrote down, he's yellow haired. We've talked multiple, multiple times about the importance of yellow hair um, in terms of, you know, Krista, the kids in the, the ending scene, different things like that. So that's important. Second thing, he has Krista, glasses you mean Historia? that... 
Oh, his story. Yeah, Excuse story me. Day. She got triggered when uh, somebody said Chris to this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, he has glasses that are exactly the same mm -hmm. as um, Aaron's dad's glasses. And a similar face. Which was interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm yes, also face. a super similar face. I mean, I don't think Aaron's dad had like a 15 pack. No, no I was didn't. about to say, I don't remember <laughs> Aaron's dad being <laughs> shredded to hell. Like, holy shit. And isn't his but... dad dead or something? Like, didn't he kill his dad when he first transformed? Like, when he got injected? Um, Wasn't that part of, like, the flashback in the first season? Was it? I don't think he killed him. I don't think... I don't remember him seeing him, like, die or anything. But I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. I don't... <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't remember. remember. Um, but, yeah, it was... It, that was that was a super good way to end the episode, though, because it's just, like... Was he either, A, coming out of the nape of the, uh, of the Beast Titan... Was he just standing on him and he controls him mm -hmm. um, through some sort of power that maybe is similar to Aaron's? Um, and they didn't give us enough detail to see any lines. Yeah. On and what did or what did he say? Do you guys remember? It's like, um, I don't like know, not, he yeah, said like not yet. It seems. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe he was expecting Reiner and Bertolt to come back with Aaron and they would have him, but or maybe not yet. I'm going to have to fight more to go get him. Or maybe expected um, Aaron to, like, you know, be ready to fight it out or some shit. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he was also on the. Uh, was it. Was it him who was on the uh, the first wall that was broken uh, in the Shinganshina district? Um, or was that um, Bertolt, Ymir, and um, Reiner? On Do you remember? Which which part? The wall. Uh, so, like, the wall of Aaron's hometown. Yeah. I know that... Um, I, think, I think the three of them were on the Trost wall. Um, and then um, the Beast Titan was on the Shinganshina wall, the very first one that was broken. Um, so maybe he was like expecting Aaron to like get into the basement finally. And does he know what's in the basement? You know, different oh, things like you're talking that, about so. the very end there, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're on yeah. The, the furthest wall, wall Maria. Mm. Um, so yeah, we were kind of left there with that cliffhanger. Um, they're good at those. A couple other things that <laughs> happened in this episode were kind of Emir's struggle to like what she wants to do. Like, does she want to like hashtag hashtag we not me? <laughs> <laughs> does she want to keep struggling to fight for Krista slash Historia, or does she want to, um, you know, do things for herself? Kind of like how Historia um, well, tells her she to. knows she knows kind of more what's going on too because the second that she sees Aaron use this power. She goes, oh, there is going to be hope within the walls. Aaron's going to kind of lead this charge. It's okay for me to let uh, Historia go back to them because uh, she is going to be safe. Whereas if she brought her with uh, Reiner and Berthold, it's a big question mark. She, Ymir's like, I'm probably going to die. They may or may not spare me if I bring Krista. But at the same time, you know, Krista is always going to be safer now that she knows that Aaron is there and, you know, involved um, with the resistance uh, because of whatever this coordinate power is, which seems to me like the power to control Titans. Right. So. I wrote it as like, is this the quote unquote power of the king? You know, mm -hmm, like the royal. Mm -hmm. the and royal she uh, she mentioned something. She mentioned something, too, about, you know, the stealing of the power and stuff like that. And she's like, it was fun being a goddess for a while, but, you know, it's time to kind of pass that along to the newer generations. Uh, so I, I imply that being, you know, maybe the same power, maybe something similar um, being passed on to Aaron. Uh, yeah. Now, I, which is a weird way to pass on powers by having your dad inject you with, like, purple liquid goo. I kind of <laughs> saw that, that statement to kind of, because, like, she says that, when after she goes off with Bertolt and and Reiner, who were like left to fend off the Titans, that um, Aaron kind of like sends off to him, and yeah, without even knowing he was doing that, right? And so like she kind of like this is kind of her you know her final decision. Like she's doing this for herself. Like she's you know done with all of this. She's going back and sa kind of sacrificing herself to make sure that Reiner and Bertolt don't get the short end of the stick when they go back to their hometown. And she says that what you would drew, what you said, that quote. And I kind of take this to kind of mean that, Hmm, well maybe Reiner and Bertolt, um, like maybe they're either 
part of that cult that she was the you know like the quote unquote goddess of or maybe they're part of that group that kind of raided that you know cult gathering and you know kicked them off the wall like maybe that's mm-hmm. like a whole like part of their hometown because you know that she is technically like 60 years separated from them right right mm-hmm. she old well, in what it all comes down to, and I've seen this theme in animes uh, throughout the years, but in the in the wise words of uh, magical girl Utena, it's uh, don't you can't save anybody else; you can only save, save yourself. yourself. And that's kind of mm-hmm. what it comes down to more often than not. You can try to work for this greater good; you can try to save everybody around you, but more times than not, you're gonna end up fucking yourself doing that. So look out for number one. You know, you can only save yourself. And in the process of doing that, you may be able to save others, but you can't specifically go out of your way um, in order to save others. Because like we've seen, you know, nine times out of ten, you end up fucking everybody else over around you. So just like with good words to, uh, to, to live by. Exactly. exactly. And Erwin. So. Yeah. But we do mm-hmm. see Historia kind of, you know, come into her own in this episode. Finally, like, you know, maybe get her second kill. I don't know if she actually killed that Titan. It kind of just. She just kind of flew on her. and then she was, <laughs> she was twirling through the yeah, air and yeah. be like, yay. Being like, sweet, <laughs> I'm so cool. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, moving on from from this, we basically covered the whole episode. Um, what are your thoughts on the whole of the second season? Let's start with uh, Alec. Really great. Okay. There we go. So like out of, <laughs> out of 10, what would you give it? And then, you know, kind of um, elaborate a little. <laughs> um so I I it had been a while since I'd seen the first season so my memories on some of it is is vague but I remember the excitement that I that I had when I was watching the episode you could really feel the intensity and all that and I they I feel that in these like less episodes they still kept that going and you could feel the intensity and the the like all the emotions that they're trying to put across through the characters and things like that um, the cliffhanger is just as epic as last time. We had a face on a wall this time, and now we've got a dude possibly coming out of Monkey Man on top of a wall <laughs> who also kind of looks like Aaron's <laughs> dad, but blonde with a six-pack because apparently he's been working out. Um, either way, the the cliffhanger is, you know, top-notch. You're really curious. It gets you going for the next season. Um, so out of ten, you know, like, I, I'd probably give it like a nine. I'd say because you know I gotta hold that ten for the perfect anime. <laughs> All right, uh, Drew, what do you think? Um, I always know an anime is gonna get higher than a six um, for me when I'm watching the show and I don't have to like scroll over with my mouse to see like how much of the show is left. <laughs> it's like yeah, y- you watch. <laughs> there's there's yeah. there's some episodes like I don't do that like with every episode for every show, but like. Sometimes you just like you know this episode is dragging. Like mm-hmm. when is it? When can I be done with this? Um, I never did that with Attack on Titan, so I, I I know that it's it's you know it's a good show throughout uh, throughout the entire season and things like that. Um, basically, what we've been saying all season, you know, good art, music, um, great story. You know, they're leaving us with just enough um, to keep us wanting to come back and find out more. Um, there's, you know, it keeps you wanting to figure out, you know, what's going on with these Titans. Are they human driven? You know, what's going to happen next sort of deal. So, you know, super, super good in that regard. Uh, for me, I am going to rate it an eight out of 10. It is excellent. Um, would highly recommend, um, to newcomers to anime. It's a good show to get into, um, you know, watching the first season up until now. Um, and it's accessible kind of to everybody because everyone can just kind of not relate to it, but you can come in and say like, this is cool action. This is cool drama. It's, there's a mystery involved with it. It's just overall a, a good story in general. So eight out of 10 uh, for me guys. Cool. Well, um, I'm kind of with you there. I'm given this season an eight out of 10. So while we did have, you know, some of our questions from the first season answered and given more questions, um, this show did a good job of, you know, kind of starting with high tension. They didn't give us a lengthy recap. They kind of just like, if you didn't watch the first season, well, tough luck. Like you just got to like know what's going watch on. It. So like, I do like the deliberate pace they had throughout the show. Although at times it did kind of suffer, 
you know, like specific episodes where they're kind of just talking in one location for the whole episode. And you're just like, all right, like, cool, I guess. But um, overall, the action scenes were great. Um, good animation. The music was amazing. Um, we have character development for a couple of people who were very minor characters in the first season. So like Amir Another and Krista, yeah. like they get a lot of character development in this season. We don't get any for Mikasa, you know, as usual. And then she kind of has yeah. that weird scene with Aaron, but whatever. Mikasa is what she, she is. She is what she I is, mean, but it's just kind of weird when you throw that kind of stuff in there. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But like all in all, <laughs> like they did a, they did a good job this season. I, was like you know coming back every week expecting um to enjoy it so eight out of ten it's got some flaws but it's also one i would recommend if you gonna if you're gonna watch this season please do re-watch season one or if you're a new a newcomer watch season one and then like you know watch this like mm -hmm. don't don't wait at all like it, Don't jump it makes right it into so it, much yeah. harder to understand mm -hmm. everything because there's mm -hmm. it, there's just a lot of things going on in the background that you have to just know about. Yep. Cool. I probably have to say one of my cool. biggest complaints with the show is that the episodes did end too fast. So that, I mean, that just shows <laughs> you that you're enjoying it. And you're like, it's yeah, over? Exactly. Come on. No, no. <laughs> I don't like that. No. I always, I want to know when it, I, I don't want to, I don't want that feeling. It's bad anime. Zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh moving on to um our happy hour segment um today we'll cover soccer quest episode 11 next um so this one was called the forgotten requiem and so ah. i'll start this off and kind of uh give a little backstory so the previous episode we have ririko has her existential crisis of not knowing yes. whether she should you know, continue on with the board of ministers and the tourism board or Way. whether she should just, you know, like break everything off and just like go back into her, you know, secluded, very isolated lifestyle. So we do learn about this more about this dragon girl uh, folk tale. That's like kind of a, a reason why this Monoyama dance, you know, exists. And, um, we learn a bit more backstory about this. So, uh, Drew, do you want to elaborate on that? Starting off, how does a group of people who are so, like, they love their town and stuff like that forget an oral tradition or, like, screw up an oral tradition, like, that badly? Like... Yeah, I know what you mean. They, they, they think, like, this dance is, like, the, oh, the, the dragons are bad, and, you know, let's get the dragons out of here by dancing, and it's just, like... It took this Scandinavian hobo to come back to town and say, like, oh, hey, by the way, like, You're here's this wrong. song. It's actually, like, trying to seduce this dragon to come back and, like, learn from it. But, you know, you guys all forgot about that, even though you love this town so much. Like, I, that really... That was you really see, what happened that. <laughs> is, is that they all forgot about that because as their town started to die, they blamed it on outsiders who came in and stole their wives and so they're like fuck outsiders <laughs> clearly this was all about trying to keep outsiders out fuck the rest of it that's what yeah happened. this 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 whore of monoyama went to like to scandinavia with this guy and like blah 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 and now he's back and it's just like, shut up and he's a hobo <laughs> he's a hobo <laughs> making paintings in the <laughs> forest of unicorns and dragons and, and, and play playing multiple instruments and just yeah. like being weird <laughs> so uh, and somehow being a god at bouldering and is just like able to climb to the top of the wall and just chilling up there like oh this episode was, just, was really stupid i think there were stairs just um I'm there just, were stairs i think so but um okay uh <laughs> moving forward so otherwise we, that would be funny we we learn that in actuality the song and dance wasn't meant to you know scare away the the dragon girl she just got scared because of it because she's like oh like what the fuck's going on like they're attacking there's me. these crazy people dancing they're, around they're this dancing around fire, fire. <laughs> so they probably I can breathe fire but i'm scared of fire <laughs> she she uh she gets scared and then dies in, in her isolation in the cave um 
-hmm. But like we do find out that, oh, actually, like they wanted to, you know, make friends, but didn't know the right way to do it because like she's a dragon. She's got wisdom. You know, in Asian culture, usually dragons are known as very wise creatures. So this kind of makes sense, right? Um, that they're, they want to, you know, like befriend the dragon girl and learn from her. So this kind of has a parallel itself with Ririko, right? Because she is this, she even claims herself in the episode, like, I am the dragon. <laughs> like, I'm a dragon. <laughs> like, um, yeah. She... She has this struggle. She's very isolated from everyone because, like, she doesn't feel like all the stuff that they consider normal is, you know, the is like cool for her. Like, it kind she of finds scares it uninteresting. her. Uninteresting. Exactly. She's like, fuck this shit. So, um, like, in this particular like comparison, Alec, um, what do you think? Um, w- like, how do you think this ties in to the whole dragon um, folklore? Like Ririko or whatever yeah. and all that. Um, well, I think it, it kind of, by her searching the library and f- first finding the folktale where it's like everyone hated the dragon. She's like, this is in the previous episode. It was all about like, that's how she felt. She felt like nobody understood her and nobody liked her and they just thought she was weird. But then she finds the new kind of, uh, you know, meaning and I guess through the help of Yoshino kind of sees it as an opportunity that she's like, well, maybe they, you know, can understand me and maybe people do want me here, you know, it, cause it doesn't seem like anybody wants her gone. They're just kind of like, you're weird. Um, but, uh, I think, but by, you know, from Yoshino, she kind of comes to that realization that she fits into the town just in her own sort of weird way. And, uh, the people still want her there. Obviously the grandma shows up. I still think it's the grandma's fault to an extent that Yo- Ririko is having such an issue because <laughs> even the grandma was like, you don't even like being around people anyways. I'm like, fuck you, grandma. Get the fuck out of here. You piece of shit. Like don't tell <laughs> her what thing, she does uh, and does what, not like. One thing about the grandma too, it's like, um, you, they talk about um, Ririko's parents, or at least the mom in particular, uh, wanting to leave um, the town. I'm like, I'm pretty sure she didn't want to leave because it was a country town. I'm pretty sure she wanted to leave because the mom of the son that she married is a bitch, aka Ririko's grandma. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm kind of kind of sick of dealing with you. Like, you're kind of really mean and really rude and like not nice to anybody. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to Tokyo. Like, bye. <laughs> and you hate me purely because I'm an outsider. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So she kind of uh kind of represents, you know, like this, you know, they've forgotten their their roots kind of thing. They're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, fuck outsiders" kind of thing, right? So like she kind of exhibits that ignorant view. And then um Yoshino kind of, you know, is the new outsider, right? She's the one that they're all trying to push away. Well, not everyone, but specifically Ririko's grandmother. And the board of merchants, they don't like what the tourism board is. And they don't especially like that there's this new queen, someone who's supposed to fix their town woes by, but she's not even from the town, right? Mm -hmm. So like, Mm -hmm. like in that itself, Yoshino herself is a little bit in a similar situation to this dragon girl thing where she's kind of like Ririko but in a different sense like she actually just is the outsider that has this wisdom quote unquote that they need to untap because like she's out from outside of the town she brings a new perspective like what can she bring to us what can she how can she help Monoyama improve and bring more people in but there's still like same old song and dance trying to scare her away saying like you fuck you fucking yeah. suck like fuck you like get the fuck <laughs> out of here all the pushback yeah keep it the same as it always is but i think we're seeing more and more people though kind of come around to it mm-hmm. and become more accepting of it um i don't necessarily think that Rico's uh, grandmother will ever um be accepting of it but we see you know these uh even with like the creepy matchmaking dudes like they're all like willing and wanting like more people to come into the town um i think one of the creepy matchmaking guys was like he ran like the bookstore and he was one of the main ones who said like this is just how the town is Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna lose my job and whatever but like even they're being more enthusiastic uh seeing the changes and different things like that so i think it is it is a good deal more people are coming around but at the same time you're not gonna 
convince everybody um, all the time, but it is what it is. Right. Um, I think what they're doing is definitely good. I mean, you're seeing a change in all these girls. Um, they're discovering more about who they are themselves, and they're growing because of it. So definitely not a bad thing. And, you know, more and more people are, as they learn more about Maniyama, more and more people are coming and benefiting from it. Um, and we kind of see that as well with the... Uh, they go to the Ranma shop and like the workers there too. And so kind of bringing back, you know, old ties, different things like that. Um, but the town is expanding, it's getting better. Um, and everybody's benefiting from, you know, this outsider coming in and trying to help. Yeah. I also got to say that the, uh, if I were a dude in Maniyama, I would have to be excited because of that little tour that they brought, because there's in that town so far from what we've seen, we've got like moms and grandmas and then kids who are like <laughs> in grade school. And then there's those five girls who none of them want anything to do with a relationship. And it's like, oh shit, they're bringing in girls who want to be in a relationship. Yeah, I'm going to get excited because the five <laughs> girls who are eligible for single men don't want anything to and do with kind us. They're too young so, for, those, for those guys too. <laughs> yeah, well that yeah, too. Yeah, they're like in their too. 30s and shit. So, but still, it's yeah, like, I'd, I'd totally. be excited. <laughs> but uh, the last thing I want to bring up with this episode, it's kind of, you know, the final, so we have the final scene where, you know, Ririko sings the song that's forgotten. I thought this scene was particularly, you know, like very powerful in evoking, you know, emotions. And I kind of want to contrast this um, and see your opinions on, you remember a few episodes ago, there was the music montage for Maki and her, you know, like kind of growing up as an actress kind of thing, kind of deal that we did not have like a particularly positive view on. Whereas like this, I personally <laughs> thought that this scene was a lot more powerful just to, you know, having this song and like the singing, like, uh, what did you think about like the, the effectiveness of music, um, between these two, these two scenes? I thought it was fine. Um, the only thing that I didn't like about it was that it was such a 360 change for this character like that. Like all of a sudden she's okay enough and excited enough to sing about this, you know, this song about the the village and the dragon that she you know emphasizes with and is compared to it was just like a too sudden thing because i feel like a day before she wouldn't have done that if that makes sense um she i don't know it's just like these girls are coming up with these cri or having these crises and they're being resolved so fast it's just like kind of it it cheapens the value of it for me i think a little bit because like I said, she wouldn't have done that a day before. Um, so that's, I mean, the, the singing was fine. The song was fine. It was done much, um, much better than previously. Um, cause I was expecting her to sing at this, whereas before it was just like, you know, flashback montage with random song. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think, I think it was, it was executed better here, but at the same time it was kind of cheapened for me just because it's like this character wouldn't do that. I mean, sure, she's having a change of heart and different things like that, but I don't see her doing that. At least having this change that fast and being able to do that, I, I just don't see it being plausible. I don't know. You, you may or may not agree with that, but that's how I see it. I kind of see it a little differently because I, I saw it through the last episode that the the main reason why Ririko was so... Um, she was so conflicted... Distraught. Was, ...was because... She wasn't sure whether she should, we sh whether she should continue, you know, being this isolated self when she kind of has this desire to, you know, be a bit, be out there and a bit more like the other girls just because she finds it fun being around them. And so I kind of felt like it was more of like a culmination of like, you know, her, her inner struggle. Like, granted, it is a little, like, at, out there, like, wow, like, now she's singing in front of a crowd. Like, I agree that she probably wouldn't have done that the even that day, like, let alone the day before. A few hours later. Um, mm. I do feel like it is a bit of a, it's more believable of an outcome than kind of how Maki just turned around and all of a sudden was okay to act because she found out that her dad liked her acting. 
<laughs> she kind of had a bit more like fundamental struggle with acting in itself th- yeah. than like Ririko like kind of coming out of her shell. Um, I don't know, Alec. Yeah. What did you think? Um, <clears throat> I mean, I see both sides. I do think it was a little like the how quick her change was was a little accelerated in in feel. But um, I mean, part of it we we only have what like twelve episodes for it. I also no, feel we if have, they were to it's it's we two seasons. What? Oh, it's two seasons. Yeah. Oh, well, mm-hmm. I was about, gonna say five episodes. I was gonna say even if they did have twenty five episodes, which they do, if they were to elongate that whole process, for me, I'd get bored. And personally, I mm-hmm. think that the pacing that they took for it kept my attention and made it more interesting in that way. Yeah. If they were to take two to three episodes to have her come come to pace or come to you know realize she wants to sing in front of these people, I'd be like, can we just get on with it? We all know what's coming. Um, so I think the pacing for that was fine for me. Um, I think the scene was much better than than the montage scene from before, which was just cheesy. Um, I mean, this one was really predictable for me because I was like, okay, they're going to pull her out. She's going to stand in front of everyone, everyone. And then as she's singing, all the fireflies are going to appear and it's going to become this beautiful memory for all the people there. And then what happened? All the fireflies appeared and everyone was like, oh my God, this is great. And so I was like, that was clearly going to happen. But it wasn't kind of in the way where you're like, this is clearly going to happen. And then you're like, it's lame because it happened how I thought it would. So I actually thought it was a good scene. Um, yeah, it did happen a little fast. I, I agree. Um, but I think with all the backstory they gave it, it was less than plausible, but slightly plausible, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and I agree more so than, than it was Maki, right? Maki's change where she was just like, Hers was within uh, I, an episode. She was like, I don't like acting because I don't want to eat cicadas to get my break. Oh, my dad likes my acting. I'm going to do it. It's like, yeah. what? <laughs> Hers was within anyway. an episode. That's why I'll, it ju- I'll jump into rush. a burning fucking building. Yeah, like. exactly. And it just out of nowhere. But yeah, I they have, did give uh, a little more time for Ririko's as well. I have a question for you guys, though. We've had two different Firefly scenes in two different anime. Which Firefly scene is better, this one or Aromanga Sensei? They're different. Dude. Oh, they're, they're different. different. <laughs> um, it, I don't know. If I had they're they're, they're kind of different. I thought that it, I thought they were both effective. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't. I don't know. I think <clears throat> if I'm going purely off like the scenery and stuff. I liked the Arrow Manga Sensei one better because the lake and all the trees and stuff was really cool. Whereas besides the fireflies and then a little bit of the stuff behind everyone, the scenery in the episode in Soccer Request was a little more boring, I guess, for me personally. It was like there was, I think there was the shrine and the bridge and then water. Whereas the other one had all this like lush, you know, awesome uh, greenery crap and then like the lake and it had that cool like pier all the way around the lake. And so that was really cool. I'd, um, so if I were to choose based off that, I'd say arrow manga, but I otherwise would, I think they were both good. I, I would say that to me, like they, they both, they both had a similar effect, but for different reasons. So like we have arrow manga mm-hmm. and like you said, it's very like beautifully drawn. Fantastical. It's very, yes, it's very fantastical. <laughs> um, but it's so fucking fantastical. The focus on that scene in Aramanga was on their dialogue, and um, the like the scenery is there to kind of you know just like kind of wow you and accentuate. Whereas in the soccer request scene in this episode, the focus is more on the music and the lyrics and the message it comes it gives across. So it's not it doesn't really make sense to have this extremely visually stunning scene of back like fireflies and like lush greenery in the background like in Aero manga when it's going to detract away detract some of your attention away from what you should be focusing on but i just want to bring up a taco commercial we have here and say por qué no los dos well <laughs> the por qué is because um is because of like what the director is trying to lead you towards like what what is the um, what are you supposed to focus on? You should just put a little disclaimer at the bottom. Pay attention to the lyrics. And then <laughs> well, that's just that. That would that would break the be fourth very wall, bad. dude. Break the fourth wall. <laughs> um. All right. Well, uh, we're dragging on on that a little too much. So I just uh, want to mention one thing, though. There was the boyfriend 
who followed her. And he was actually, so we had that misleading ending where the guy was coming out of the lake. They're like, oh, it's going to be the dragon. It's really just a stalker boyfriend who wants his ex back. But his his ex-girlfriend's mom doesn't like him, so they can't get married. That guy was, and then he's showing up behind people with dragon masks on. I'm just, (laughs) that guy was weird. I'm just glad that the matchmaking tour is over because that was so fucking cringe. (laughs) It was so bad. (laughs) The interactions, yeah. It's 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 just, it's really awkward. Well, I mean, it's realistic. Because you cringe at it and you're just that's like, wow, well, I can believe that that's, that would happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A bunch of dudes yeah. trying too hard. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's move on from uh, Soccer Quest and then uh, cover Aromanga Sensei, episode 11. How the two Boring. met and future siblings. Stupid so, episode. Time to get pissed. We, uh, <laughs> time to get pissed. Stupid we episode. have in this episode kind of, you know, the backstory with how Masamune... Um, becomes a writer and essentially how Sugiri herself becomes an illustrator. So, um, Drew, do you want to talk about this whole, uh, you know, first collaboration between the two? It was cheap. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset about this episode. It was and, cheap. Uh, I'll it was walk, you guys cheap. Through, walk you guys through why. Um, <laughs> it starts off pissing me off because Sugiri's at the bottom of the stairs, like, Okaidi Masai, like, can't even man up enough to say it to her brother face to face has to go back into her room and that whole she's scene really mastered the stairs mess. we gotta say though she's no, really no, no she, she hasn't stairs. not later she hasn't even mastered the stairs because she tries to go, do it later and she can't even fucking walk down them she's like oh, she's so winded <laughs> like jesus christ and then so um Masamune is like, let's go, let's go out and see uh, the first day of our book in Akihabara. Let's hang out together. And I'm like, oh, she's actually gonna go outside the house. Of course, no, she has to go outside the house. Dude. She has to go on Skype, and he has to be this idiot walking around with her with his little tablet, like Talking fucking <laughs> laptop, and be like, here's here's Akiba. Like you've never been here before, even though you live in fucking Japan. Oh, this is just like in my manga that I read. Like, please <laughs> shut up. Like, this is just like my, one of, of my house. Japanese animes. <laughs> It, he has to carry around and he's like talking to her and like it, how, how is nobody like staring at him while he's doing this like everyone's just like this is fine this is what happens <laughs> in japan i i could go on forever the last thing that i'll mention and i'll let you guys talk about it and then i'll bring in more stuff that i hated later but um <laughs> when that when they're going they're having these flashbacks um to them when they were younger and like having their online interactions couple things so sigiri's seven what fucking parent doesn't make your seven-year-old go to school? No seven-year-old wants to go to school, obviously. <laughs> yeah. School sucks. But you're not. You're, you're just going to let your kids sit at home and she's like, I'm sad, I'm on my phone. Why does a seven-year-old have a phone yep. with I access that to the too. internet? That's the other question. What, what, <laughs> what parent lets a seven-year-old write to a mysterious person on the internet? Like, and... It's, it's just, there's just so many things. And draw, I'm so and, mad. and draw etchy pictures. <laughs> well, I mean, the, well, I mean, the mom does that. The mom yeah. So now you have so your, the, you I have your reason because <laughs> why, why the mom is a <laughs> Yeah. Cause yeah, she's yeah, like, that doesn't make me want to lick her panties. And she's like, where did you hear that? And she's like, from you. And then later Points we get that, you. that image of her mom you. drawing a picture. And she's like, like laughing, drooling over it. Like she's going to do lewd things to this drawing that you just created um uh, also yeah going off of that as well what what seven-year-old is articulate enough to have like these conversations with this person like every six and seven-year-old i know is like part of my french fucking retarded because they are seven years old what what seven-year-old is articulate enough to you know communicate with anybody on that level, let alone set goals for themselves and be like, I'm going to be this famous like artist and blah, blah, blah. Like no seven year old talks like that. No seven year old is like that. Every, every seven year old that I know is like concerned with, you know, um, I don't know, like my little pony and like playing when do I get to play at the, park the sandbox. Next? Yeah. Like, do I get like an hour of Game Boy time before I go to bed? Like, <laughs> dumb, What's dumb for shit dinner? like that. Am whereas, I gonna have to eat vegetables? Yeah, uh. yeah. Like, d- do I get chicken dinos tonight? Like, did Mom go to Costco and get me chicken dinos? Like, can I have those? <laughs> I can't work the microwave in order to make them because you don't even but, understand you know, how to use a phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just there's just it's just too much. It's it's way too much. And they confirmed she was seven. 
She's seven years old. Yeah, she's seven. And he's no eleven. seven year old is like that. He's seven. She's seven. And like he's an, 11. an eleven year old. An eleven year old. I can get it. Like uh, that's fine. You can make it. Uh, not even interesting stories. You can be an idiot, but. Uh, you can work the internet and do different things like that. I'm fine with that. But a seven year old? Yeah. Like, yeah. when I was seven, what? you know, the, all the people I knew who, like, had quote unquote goals, they're like, I'm going to be a fireman. And then, you know, two years later, yeah. they're, they're going to be a hospital guy. And then two years after that, they want to be a cop. And then, a, and then they're like, well, you're, no, you're now a I don't year out do of that. kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> you can barely fucking read. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially, especially in an, inter, uh, an intricate language like uh, Japanese, like being able to read, like at a competent level at seven is unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. the show itself is unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, God. moving on, I'm, I'm, Alec. I'm mad. So, um, <laughs> what, what do you think? Um, because like this is essentially kind of, you know, like actually the story finale of this season or series in general. I don't know. Hopefully God. it does not get another season, God. but, um, that's what I wrote. I'd like, please don't get another season. <laughs> th- this is essentially, you know, like a wrap up of like the story for the series. Like, what did you think about, you know, how they t- tied things up, quote unquote, um, with this episode? Um, so I have to say, cause earlier, <clears throat> Uh, Drew, you said you hated this episode, and I said I was more bored than triggered because I wasn't really triggered. That's because I forgot some of the episode because I watched it yesterday, I believe. <laughs> and um, I actually, once you started, once you guys, once you mentioned what happened in the show, I was like, oh yeah, I was triggered because personally, I think that the way they did this ending was super fucking cheap. Like they were like, okay, well, he has this weird love for his little sister, and there's really no reason why. But now we're going to create this story about how she and he kind of motivated each other to have these goals in the future. And there's your reason why he loves her so much, because they're actually the same person, but they just don't know it. I'm like, this is stupid as fuck. And we all know that now he's obviously going to we already knew this. He's going to end up with the worst of all the people. And and the reasoning is stupid. Like, I, I just thought it was a super cheap way to end it. They're like, hey, let's wrap it up and show, oh, they've actually been talking to each other for a super long time, and they're the reason for each other's, like, goals in life. And and then, like, oh, wow, they're going to be all excited at this giant tower of books and then walk around. She still can't leave her house. He still doesn't realize that she's just a weird fucker. And I, I just didn't like it. I didn't like any of it at all. I, I mean, yeah, you no, I didn't like even- any of it at all. So the problem here too is you didn't even get the oh yeah most I didn't get the part yeah the, the, the part yeah you mentioned you didn't even understand because yes, there's no, I like didn't, fifty didn't cameos either. in this episode it saved me it's <laughs> hey not knowing saved me gonna, from some triggered I'm gonna it's, it's, yeah I'm gonna list out the cameos in this episode so yeah. first they're like at the electronic shop and then the fucking super eccentric otaku for like the idol i forgot the idol chicken or emo um but you like run past like towards the concert mm-hmm. venue and you're like i was like oh mm-hmm. what the fuck and then yep. and then he's like fucking walking across the bridge and then we see fucking like the game club the game creator club uh uh members like you know having a date her name her name is the BL chick. The BL and chick. Her brother. And then her brother's like standing behind a pillar, like spying on them because like he's creepy <laughs> as fuck. Um, and then, and then finally at the end of the episode, and then Drew, you can elaborate on this. We get the you know, Kirino and the crew God. buying Masamune's book, and they're all and arguing talking about it. And then Kuroneko is like super fucking, just super, like. M- she just like rails on Masamune. She's like, he's this no name author. Like <laughs> just like, just so cruel. I mean, it is, it. It, it's, it's true to her character yeah. and Kiri, Kiri knows same thing. True to her character being passionate about something stupid. <laughs> um, but it's, I saw them, I saw them coming out the elevator. I'm like, no. And then they showed their faces up like, please, no, and I was oh, I was so mad. I was so mad. Did, did you? It was. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice how earlier in the episode in the flashback? So like, not only does Masamune's dad look a little bit like Kyosuke, but he was voiced by the same dude. He has the same voice. I'm, it's this. Ugh, I know. And <laughs> going off that too, it's like 
No, I don't even want to mention that because I know, it, I know it's not true and it's just like stupid. Um, but it's like, did did the two kids hook up their parents? Like, I know they didn't know who each other was, but like, did they hook up their parents so that they could be closer like together? I know that's not true, but it's, <laughs> but it's just like it's stupid, stupid shit like that that like the author would make like a realistic thing. Well, um, not I mean, but, realistic in a very subjective sense yeah. of the word realistic. <laughs> <laughs> But oh my god, they came up that elevator, and I was just like, "No, <laughs> go back down. I don't want to see you." And oh. then like Smutsuke and Masamune have like a little glance at each other, and it's like I'm waiting for one of them to like wink at each other, like, "Yeah, he's this like, is yeah, happening. little sisters." <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> all I have to say is, um, when that whole scene was going on, they came up the elevator, and they were talking about it. And I just remember thinking, why are they giving so much like screen time to this random group talking about <laughs> his oh, anime? Yeah, is dude. it supposed Alex to be like, confused. I was confused. I was like, why are they? Because I haven't even looked up the characters since you guys have been, have been talking about Aura Emo and all that. And I, so I'm like, I don't know who any of them are. And so I'm like, l- like watching all this. I'm like, why? Why? I was so confused. I was like, is it just to show that like people are talking about his his book and they're really excited for it, but then there's like dialogue going on, or or is there some reason? And then now I find out it's because the author can't get over his his other anime. Yeah. During the anime that's <laughs> about like, making the other anime. Give up on it. Give, just give up. up. It's dead. It. You already killed it. Just <laughs> it's already dead. Stop. Um. Just uh, real quick before we uh, close up, um, did we did we notice how uh, you know Masamune actually stepped back from the door after knocking on it? He oh learned. yeah, he didn't get whacked in the face. Yeah, he learned. Yeah, he's, he's he didn't get learning. destroyed. He didn't get destroyed. He's learning. We just wanted to point that out. <laughs> also, yes. it was obvi- another like super typical scene for the show. When she was like wearing the sweatshirt, and he's like, "Let's go to the beach," and then she starts taking off the sword, and he's like, "Oh my oh, god, yeah, what that are you doing?" Me, and then his eyes were like, he had his fingers open. I was like, "God, can you guys move triggered. away from mm. the obvious <laughs> shit that you've been doing all season?" And no, they, this is they dumb really and boring. Can. Like, they, uh, they can't. Yeah, I, put, I was actually can't. mad at this episode because fucking Elf Yamada. Or at least Muramasa. Neither of them showed up. And I was like, please, bring them in in no, the episode. Well, they episode. Bring them in. Yeah. They're not coming They're not back. Coming back. They, no. They've had, I know. Their, they've yes. had their episode. They had their chance. They had their chance. And they, and they lost already. Yeah, well, he, they... What a show. They they didn't realize that he's a fucking lolly, lollycon and a siscon, so... He, How old is he? Fourteen and a, and a pedophile because she's she's like fucking eleven. Well, he he's said 14, five. Right? He said five years ago is when he started writing, so he's sixteen. He's 16? Yes. And then, so she's 12. And so she's 12. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. like, let's go to middle school yeah. together. How is she in middle school? She's 12. That's four years difference. Are they in the same school? Um, would she just be starting and he's finishing? She would just be starting and he would be in his last... You, no. If he's... No, he would be in high school already because... Well, they go ninth grade is still middle school. High school is only three years. Yeah, but like he's sixteen, so like um, he would be in high school. <laughs> and he depends said, on when his birthday is. But and he yeah. said, "Let's go to middle school together." Anyways, I thought it was weird. So that's like a senior dating a freshman. It, let's 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 stop Anyways, let's, let's stop trying on. to make sense of this show. Yeah. The show doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense. sense. The show is stupid. It. Like, we'll, we'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll, we you'll get one. you'll get your final episode episodes. that has everybody in it yeah. in the next one. It's a throwaway and there's gonna, episode. And there's gonna be a kiss, and he's gonna kiss Sagiri, <sighs> and then I'm gonna flip the table over, and I'm gonna be <laughs> can mad we just about get it for a, one more week, and then and then I'll rate it a four, and we'll and we'll move on. Can we get a spinoff of Elf Yamada Sensei just on our own? Oh hell yeah, I'd be down for that. That'd be dope. They, just they doing do whatever it. she does. They, no, they, they won't. won't. They won't do it. But that would be, <laughs> that'd be awesome. That'd be so good. Anyways. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> uh, we're all mad. Closing up. Um, so let's uh, quickly mention that we will be attending Anime Expo this coming July in Los Angeles. Um, whether any of you would care to know what we're doing, we'll probably be covering the convention you know maybe make a special episode about it and then um if anyone happens to recognize our voices <laughs> then, <laughs> then maybe you could uh maybe um you know give us a shout out um and then like um, say hi say hi um 
in particular, like you'll probably see us like walking around Drew and Alec with their expensive uh, DSLRs. <laughs> um, just don't knock me over. <laughs> yeah, um, just don't don't knock him over. He'll get pissed if you break his camera. Um, and then um, on this next coming week, we will be releasing a episode that Alec and I just recorded, covering the last few episodes of Soccer Rider Reset, as well as a little bit of Akashic Records. We'll probably be, you know, for the next season, possibly be doing more like separate content that's a lot shorter format to uh, cover shows that may not fit within our podcast. Mm -hmm. And then um, next week, we it's kind of a weird time because we have these season finales as well as like season premieres for summer starting to happen. So um, we'll probably do a separate, you know, summer season preview where we'll talk about, you know, shows that are going to be coming out this summer. Want like potentially talk about what we may or may not cover. And then um, probably do a separate episode from the finales for like, you know, the first episodes of the summer season. So, um, yeah, look out for that. I don't know. Maybe we could do a stream or something. I don't know. Like it's up to uh, what these guys think is, uh, is good. Yeah, oh, there's stuff coming we'll out for sure. Out. Yeah. Um, been a little lax on Twitter, but you know, still keep an eye on it for updates. Cool. Well, uh, as you said, um, please look out for our Twitter um, at Anime on Draft. We are also on SoundCloud and iTunes if you want to subscribe. YouTube as well. You can subscribe and comment on our videos. Um, and then on WordPress, we do have a contact feature where you can you know give us comments suggestions talk about stuff you'd like to see us do in the future and as well as an archive of all of our content so um do you guys have anything else to add um a couple i'm of looking the... forward no go ahead i'm uh looking forward to next season a couple of my or at least my favorite show is returning um i don't know if we'll be covering it um to an exclusive extent just because not everybody's caught up but um i will be for sure doing a video blog or something along the lines covering uh the next season of uh monogatari so look out for that I'm super excited cool alec and then what i was gonna say was a couple of the the youtube exclusive stuff is not on the wordpress so um Oh, you know, okay. check out the the YouTube as well, because uh, I, I I know I didn't upload the Sakurada special. Oh no, I did. Did I? We didn't upload Ignore this me. last one yet because we didn't. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it will be coming out this week. It will be on both. Ignore everything I just said. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, um, we enjoyed uh, having you with us today, and um, please join us next time. See you guys. See and you, girls then. and people. <laughs> <laughs>